Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our class. We can execute a method on a selector. So we have the same dot syntax, okay, object.method. And the only thing with jQuery, you think of your objects as selectors because they are. All right, every object is accessed as a selector. Okay, so we have the, um, the selector dot method name, and if there were some, some parameters that we were passing to that method, we were, they would be in there. Now, one thing about methods, and this is true of traditional JavaScript, the only difference is we didn't really get into traditional JavaScript heavy duty. All right, methods generally are used to set something, but they can also get or retrieve values. So methods are, and in high-level programming language, you might hear this term, getters and setters, set properties or to get or retrieve properties. So we're going to look at three very relatively easy to use methods in this class and learn how to use them with jQuery because they are specifically jQuery methods. All right. If you look at the bottom of my slide, I have two elements. So uh, assume this is in the body section. I have a H1 and H2. There's nothing inside them. All right, if we were going to do something to these two elements using jQuery, um, and these are element selectors, inside our ready function is where this code would be executed, which is where, where this code would be written and lie. All right, so let's take a look at our first selector. H1. Now it is an element selector. Dot HTML. That's the HTML method. Uh, very similar to inner HTML. It allows us to write or set HTML text and HTML uh, inside that H1. So I can execute that method on the first H1 semicolon statement, and on my second line of code. I'm calling or executing the HTML method on my second H2. All right, and I'm, this time I'm going to write some uh, HTML also. All right, so this is an example of, of setting. A method is setting some type of value. All right, now, one nice thing, one thing about when you start working with jQuery and you start setting or even retrieving and manipulating your HTML, you can't just take for granted it's happening. You actually really need to make sure that it's happening. All right, so if I were to test, have tested that code in the browser, this is what it would look like. I would see that, yes, there is hello world in my H1. Yes, there is hello world again in my H2, and the H again is italicized. If I were to look at my view source on the right-hand side there, I would just see the JavaScript. I wouldn't see anything. I mean, other than the visual in the browser, how do I really know that that really happened? Well, this is where Firebug is your best friend. If you access the Firebug add-on and go into the HTML mode, it shows you what is called the rendered. JavaScript that will actually show you what jQuery is actually rendering. So I suggest you do this. All right, let's take a look at the HTML method again. In the um, bottom of the slide, there's. let's assume this is the body of the web page. H1 ID equals first heading. There's an ID. All right, so in the head section, we're going to access that object, that element, using an ID selector. So here we have the jQuery selector, pound first heading, dot HTML, hello world. So we're executing that method on that selector. All right, we can do the same thing with a class selector. So in the bottom of the, the slide here, Assuming this is in the body section, we have a P class equals para, a div class equals para. All right, they both share the same class. 
So if I was going to execute a method using that class name here in my ready event here, dollar para, which is my jQuery selector.html hello world. So both of those elements would now say hello world. All right. Now, supposing we're going to set, let's take a look at the bottom of the slide on the left, and this is essentially in the body section. We have an H1 and an H2, two H1s. First H1, second H1. They already have some content in there. All right. So, here again, if we were going to set, which is what we've been doing, all right, it's going to overwrite it. So there's our selector h1.html. All right, we're setting. And it sets everything. Now let's take a look at getting. It will only retrieve the value for the first matched selector. All right. It's not going to retrieve it for every selector, just the first one. The first match. All right, so let's take a look at our body section. We have two H1s. All right, we have a first H1 and a second H1. Now, in our JavaScript, in our ready event, on the right hand side of the equation, I have h1.html. If I'm not setting something, I'm getting it. So the HTML method with no parameters being sent is going to retrieve the value of the HTML in that H1. Not both of them, only the first one. So how do I test that? I'm going to store that, that value in a variable. Then I'm going to call that variable with an alert. And we would see here in this alert that it retrieved the HTML. You can see the i tags there. All right, so not only can we set a value. Not only can we write HTML to the page, but we can retrieve it. You know, we could have done that with inner HTML. We just had no reason to do it. All right. So, this is the example of a method setting and getting. All right. We also have a text method. And here again, in the in, in JavaScript, we also had inner text, which was the same as inner HTML only it, it was text, not text and HTML. Same principle here. It allows us to set text or retrieve text. Now, the only difference in this one, and this is an exception to the rule, when you retrieve or get using the text method, it actually will match all, select, all selections and descendants, meaning if the selection has a child inside it. All right, so let's take a look at our body section here. We have two H1s, and one H1 also has a child. And up in the JavaScript, if we were to say H1 is our selector.txt, it would retrieve the value from both of those H1 elements. If we were to store that in a variable and then use that variable as an alert, we would see that it would echo back the text from both of them. All right, this is an ex exception. Generally speaking, methods that get or retrieve only apply to the first matched selection. Okay, another useful method that we're going to look at is the CSS method. And the reason this is useful is it's because it's an easy way of testing that you're ac accurately selecting something. Here again, when you do something in the page, there's got to be some kind of visual letting you know that you got the object. So by changing its color, that's a very nice thing so that we can test. And here again, that's all similar to an alert, testing. All right, so let's take a look at our body section. We have two H1s, first H1, second H1. All right. Um, in the jQuery, here we are, h1, it's element selector dot CSS. This is the CSS method. Notice that now we are setting a property and a value. 
Okay, this is the CSS method. What is CSS? It's setting a property colon value. The only difference is here the syntax. So you need, there's two things. You need the property and the value. One thing about the CSS method, you can't do shorthands. You can only do single properties and, and values. You can do many of them, several together, and I'll show you that next. Notice the syntax in parentheses and quotations. Property, comma, value in quotations. And that would set both of those H1s. Now, if you are going to set multiple properties and values, the syntax drastically changes. This is the same scenario, but take a look at the CSS method. There's our opening left parenthesis, our closing left right parenthesis. Inside them, we have an opening and closing curly brace. Now, we have our property in quotations, colon value in quotations, comma. Then we have the next property colon value. So as many property colon value pairs as you wanted, you could put them in there. They must be comma separated. Now the CSS method can also retrieve a value. So let's take a look. Here in the body section, we have two H1s. They, the first H1 has a color property set to blue. The second H1 has a color property set to red. In our JavaScript, we are using the H1 selector, the element selector, they are both H1s, dot CSS. You have to specify the property. We are retrieving the value of whatever property has been specified. So if we want to retrieve the value of the color property for the H1, here again, we can store that in a variable, call that variable with an alert. Now, here again, it's only going to, going to return the first match selector. And just for your information, it returns the color values as RGB. Just kind of interesting how it does that. Okay, chaining. jQuery allows us to execute several methods on the same object as once. This is called chaining. So here we have the h1 selector dot HTML, executing the first method dot CSS, executing the second method. And there can be a third, a fourth, and a fifth. Now this can run off your screen. So you might want to just do a carriage return and put the dot on the next line. It reads just the same. Remember, white space is ignored. It makes it line up a little bit nicer and it's a little bit easier to read, just like you might do with your CSS code. Okay, clicking. All right, clicking is always a good way of doing something. All right, so at the, in the body section, there's an H2. Nothing's inside it. All right, I'm going to click on that H2. And when I click on it, I'm going, to ch I'm going to call an alert. All right, so in our ready event, here we have our jQuery selector dollar and in parentheses h2.click. All right, so the click event, we are going to pass it an anonymous function. Notice we passed an anonymous function to the ready event. We're also going to pass an anonymous function to the click event. Why? Because it's not a name. There's no name. This concept of anonymous functions is used over and over again in jQuery. You can create named functions also, but this is the way the anonymous functions work. All right, so when we click, we're calling an anonymous function, and the code to be executed on that click is this alert. Notice. The click function ends in the curly brace, paren, semicolon. Notice I have a comment, end click. Notice the ready event ends in a curly brace, paren, semicolon. Notice I have a comment. You're going to have this over and over again in your code. Get used to commenting these end trios because if you accidentally start getting confused and mixing them up, uh, your code is going to have problems.